The Duvity Paradox expansion brought with it a ton of new features, key among which the Incarnate Genesis adapters that brought new life to old forgotten ranged weapons, bringing them out of the shadows and into the light of a new meta. But can it do the same for melee weapons and do they even need it? Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into the Incarnate Hate. I got two endgame setups because these Incarnate adapters are not exactly new player friendly. That said, we're still gonna go over everything that you need to know. What evolutions to pick, what works, what doesn't, how does a build look like, what kind of options you have for it, and what kind of performance you can expect out of the weapon. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the Incarnate Hate. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles, and for that, just a couple of melee swings. In order to evolve the Incarnate Hate, what you gotta do is get yourself the combo counter of at least 6, which is pretty simple and easy to do. Once you hit at least 6, your combo counter starts glowing. And if you do a heavy attack, kapow, the weapon goes into its full Incarnate form, granting you bonus stats, a different aspect, and bonus functionality as well. Now when you swing your weapon, it believes it's a ranged weapon. So how do you improve melee weapons? You give them gun form, essentially. Now this projectile has travel speed, which is pretty slow. It's got contact damage, and then after about a half a second delay, it's gonna be exploding, dealing heat damage. This explosion, this projectile is not documented currently anywhere. What follows are my observations based on testing. So, the damage. 80 on contact, 80 on the explosion. The contact damage is IPS, the explosion damage is heat. Now the IPS seems to be 20 to impact, 20 to puncture, and 40 to slash. Now what you gotta keep in mind that this is an actual explosion. It will stagger you if you're not Revenant or another Warframe that can deal with this issue. Or what you can do is use Prime Surefooted. We got an update on this topic, however, over from DE Marcus on the official forums, and he says the following. The team will be reviewing the self-stagger on the hates in card and form. We want you to be able to get up close and personal without the consistent AoE knockdown. So even more hand-holding array. One last thing that you should know about, the heavy attack has a guaranteed slash proc, or a forced slash proc, if you will. Let's talk stances. Which one should I use? Should I go for Stalking Fan or should I go for Ripping Spiral? Best in slot is gonna be Ripping Spiral. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Higher multiplier in the neutral combo. We're gonna be using Eternal Nocturne. That is the E. E and the E for a simple E spam build. And that's gonna be the easiest way to play with the weapon. You simply press E three times without your arrow keys, without anything on the mouse. And that's gonna be your optimal combo. Now take a look at the weapon. It's gonna be transforming back to normal any second now. Look at my buff bar. And three, two, one gone because you don't get unlimited time in the incarnate form you get three minutes that is going to be 180 seconds and you can track that on your buff bar and you can also track it by the appearance of your weapon and if the explosions disappeared or not when the explosions are gone you know you're going back to normal and now boom back to incarnate form Another thing about Eternal Nocturne is the fact that you end up with an overhand swing which can be easily made into a headshot granting you fantastic bonus damage. Headshots are fantastic and yes my friends, you get headshot with a melee weapon as well. Should you try to go for it? Well, it's gonna depend on the build, but that's another advantage to the combo, which is why we're using Reaping Spiral. Also, you got extra bleed in the combo and it matches the default polarity, so you don't have to reform it. Evolution 1 enables a transformation granting 100% melee damage, 20% sprint speed and 20% to bullet jump. Evolution 2 gives you a choice between Swordsman's Flourish and Stalker's Legacy. Both of these talents will be giving you 30 base damage and both of these talents are bugged and do not give you 30 base damage. On the left side, Swordsman Flourish with only a melee weapon equipped, 100% combo count chance. I would use this one for a light attack build aka EEE -E -E spam. And the second one, Stalker's Legacy, with Dread and this pet equipped, which is a pretty big ask if you think about it, plus 30 initial combo, and I would use this one for a heavy attack build. But it's a pretty big ask to have your entire loadout just for this tiny little talent that is not super ultra impactful. So you know what? 9 times out of 10, I'm gonna be going with Swordsman Flourish. Evolution 3 is the usability tree, and these are a lot more impactful on melee weapons. Or I can reach 0.8 meters range, this is gonna be your best in slot. 
Swift Break sounds good on paper only. 60% heavy attack, wind up speed. And for a heavy attack build, you're gonna say, dude, definitely the way to go. Not really needed, especially considering we're gonna be using Amalgam Organ Shatter. So the difference this one would make is about a tenth of a second in the actual wind up speed. I would skip it. Resolute Force, 10 second combo duration. Now you need a source of combo duration, but you can get it from a number of different other sources. I would go with the extra range of Orokin's Reach. And the final talent, the most impactful one, you got yourself absolute valor increases critical chance by 10 percent this is going to be ideal for a heavy attack build next you got status chance 20 percent from absolute dominion skip this one and for a light attack build subtle force is the way to go increase critical chance by six percent increases status chance by ten percent so heavy attack build light attack build which one do you want to see first let's go light attack build first you got an option of three, the cheap monkey, the luxurious monkey, and the heavy monkey. Which monkey are you? Essentially, you're gonna go for this one if you wanna e-spam and you don't have the fancy mods. This is with the fancy mods and e-spam. And if you're looking for a heavy attack build, you're gonna go like so. For the time being, considering that these incarnate adapters are pretty much end game, we're gonna go for the end game e-spam initially. Now you're probably gonna ask about sacrificial steel why not uh, whatever else for the optimal amount of damage you want to go with a smite mod that is a faction mod depending on the faction that you're gonna be going and fighting let's spawn some exogug we're gonna go with prime smite grenier yes let's be disgusting till the very end yeah <laughs> might as well go all the way level 165 exogug now let's see how quick can we get rid of all of them look at that one heavy attack a couple of melee swings i'm already going in carnan form and skrpow now my friends a few notes on this build as you can see is extremely powerful we're gonna go to steel path as well but you might drop your combo counter with this specific setup if you do drop your combo counter there are two solutions which i recommend you either go to level three of the evolutions and you pick up resolute force it's not exactly ideal i would keep the extra reach from the orokian talent but what you can do is use dexterity arcanes instead so you get to keep your reach from the uh, evolution it's entirely up to you what they're dead already fine how's about that steel path segment with the cringy music welcome to draco series and this is gonna be a survival against the grenier with the smite mod so you can see exactly what this weapon is capable of now i know you're really really disappointed because of the lack of cringy music but i remembered my audience ain't 12 so you're just gonna see the weapon's performance with my amazing voice put over it honestly the weapon is amazing i mean it goes through everything i cannot deny that i cannot deny the fact that midi is extremely powerful because it is look at that look at that you don't even need to try all you gotta do is press e i don't even w or anything all i do is aim my mouse in the general direction of the enemies and spam e you want to go through everything nice and easy this is the way hashtag the way no questions about it now in the interest of full disclosure i got primary and secondary dexterity to solve that issue with the combo counter so i don't need to renounce the range and i got the panzer profile out with me to provide some vital procs because you know she's immortal vital procs all of that good stuff now i can stay here essentially forever and i can take this all the way to level cap if that's what you're interested in but it's not gonna prove any goddamn thing you're just gonna go through everything nice quick and easy because the weapon is extremely powerful and very 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 easy to use i do believe you can make an e-spam macro but keep in mind that digital extreme stance on macros is you do so at your own risk so you tell me gentlemen would you make a macro or not Though, I don't know if you can, if you would actually ban people for pressing a single solitary button. Then again, I'm not the E. What do you think of the performance? Let me know in the comment section down below. And I do believe that is pretty much indicative of the weapon's capabilities with a spam E build. Would you like to see something more uh, <clears throat> heavy? We got the flash, we got the flash. That means Santa Claus is coming. Oh, look at that, it's Torment. Hey Torment, how you doing? How you been? Apparently he's somewhere there. Hold on, I'll come to you. D don't you move. There I go. Alright, okay. Why so bugged? Okay, so he, she was bugged. Ah, dead! Remember, there's a couple of changes you should make to the evolutions if you're going for a heavy attack build. But the most important one is going to be Absolute Valor. Technically, you do get a benefit out of Stalker's Legacy, but like I said before, it's too much of a big ask. So let's just go like so. Heavy monkey build looks like this if you didn't catch it earlier and if you want a print screen this build will apply to a multitude of midi weapons just like this one. Of course these stands will change and the reasoning but outside of that not much. 
standard heavy attack build that we got prime smite grenier but i would recommend this patch overdrive this patch overdrive with this one on essentially you get from place to place faster from mob group to mob group so it's a bit of a comfort pick for the absolute most amount of damage yes yes smite mod or bane mod whatever now one more time for the level 165 exogoog without a bane mod we're gonna be using this patch overdrive for the comfort and technically one heavy attack should be enough yep there you go you got yourself your combo and now i'm going heavy attack gang look at that one shot Flash on everybody, destroy everything with no priming whatsoever because you see the keen eye among you has noticed and has already commented probably. Hey bro, I prime pressure point over the shower la. Because I don't want to prime my targets. That slows down the gameplay, making it less efficient. For level cap, however, I would use a secondary primer to apply, well, st whatever stats to my target statuses and then hit them with my heavy attack alternatively panzer vulpa file for the vital procs because you are getting that guarantee slash which is killing these targets so vital plus slash equals amazing aka the hunter munitions of melee weapons what you know dead what do you mean you know dead no you dead 40,000 without a bane mod guarantee that is pretty significant but of course you can push this build even further let's make a couple of changes Smite Grenier instead of Dispatch Overdrive and a Panzer Volpa. Now another thing you should bear in mind is the fact that this is a Dispo 3 out of 5, which means Riven mods are 100% worth it for this one. If you want to go for a Riven mod for the hate, this is definitely the time if the prices haven't exploded. Bleed there was 105,000. Vital on the target, I'm gonna hit him with my thing. 413,000. Hooray, Bane mods. This is why Faction mods, not Bane mods, Bane mods just for primary smite for melee, are so goddamn powerful. 413,000 so I went from 40k to 400k just because of viral and the bane mod yeah it's a combination it's not just the effectiveness of the bane mod alone and this is the kind of build and performance you can expect out of this weapon this is the kind of performance you can expect on a lot of melee weapons because don't get me wrong the incarnate hate is a freaking fantastic weapon and if you enjoy melee you should definitely get it but there are plenty of other melee weapons that can offer similar performance but yeah this is a controlled environment in the simulacrum let's go back to draco on series welcome to the heavy attack gang my friends just spam heavy attack at this level you don't even need to spam one slice will be enough look at that beautiful fantastic damage really easy very simple there's really no strategy or anything in it you just press heavy attack and then you watch the targets get absolutely annihilated now what you can do is try to alter the build a little bit and try to build up your combo counter but honestly you don't really need to you can just do this just do this at this point if you try to increase the speed of the actual heavy attack animation you can do so only about a tenth or a fifteenth of a second it doesn't really matter all that much not that you need it as you can see you are going through everything quite effectively but i gotta be honest with you i get hella bored after about 10 minutes of this maybe you don't however maybe you do not maybe you use your entire arsenal and do something of the sort which keeps things a bit more interesting and fun but for me this is gets extremely extremely boring really quickly granted that doesn't mean it's not highly effective it is extremely effective even destroying high level xmi like so look at that now you see him now you don't disgusting level of performance obviously you might be curious okay which one is better though which one pulls the bigger numbers well if you take into account a good mob density eventually eventually the light attack build will start to pull ahead but to me this feels a bit more uh no it doesn't it's just spam it's just, it doesn't matter i either way whatever you want it, i both work just freaking fine tell you what do i understand now why you put cringy music over this segment because it's hella bloody boring I wonder if the bubble guy could actually affect us because of the uh, projectile we got. Is that misery? Hi, oh, misery. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, behold my heavy attack, misery. Bow down before it, misery. Misery has been slain. If it would only be that easy. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, let me know in the comment section down below. I don't normally do melee guides because this is all there is to them. You can use the exact same builds on a variety, on a multitude of other melee weapons as well. It doesn't mean it's not effective. It is highly effective. It's all about your entertainment standards. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, 
consider supporting us via Patreon. There's gonna be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now. Until next time, my friends, bye-bye.